In this video, we'll review some of the concepts that we have learned, but we'll focus on the influence line for moments. And so in this problem, we have a 25 meter long girder of a bridge, which is simply supported at the right end and at 3 meters from the left end. And so we have a span of 25 meters and then an overhang of 3 meters. And then it is subjected to a highway lane load consisting of a uniformly distributed load and a concentrated load as follows. Now for the uniformly distributed load, we are given 9.35 kN per meter. And then for the concentrated load for moment, we will actually use 80 kN. And then for shear, we are to use 115.7. And so this means that when we will draw the influence line for shear, this is what we'll multiply to the ordinate, 115.7. While if we have moment, we'll use 80. Now by the way, the questions are, what is the maximum positive span moment? And then, what is the maximum support reaction? And then, what is the maximum negative moment? And so these are our questions. Now, in drawing the influence line for moments, we'll still use the same concept wherein we'll apply a unit load at the critical points of the span and then we'll solve the ordinate or uh, simply the moment at a certain point when a unit load is applied anywhere along the span. Now for the first problem, we are to compute the maximum positive span moment which will naturally occur at the span which is simply supported. And so that means that uh, we are actually interested in the influence line for the moment at D because the maximum positive span moment will occur if our concentrated load is at D and also our uniformly distributed load. And so let's make a cut right here and then we'll reveal the internal forces. Now in here, the internal forces will be considering the left side, we have counterclockwise. And then considering the right side, we have clockwise. Now this is still due to our sign conventions because when considering the left side, uh, that will be minus m. And then if we'll sum up any moments right here, that will be equal to zero. And then we can move minus m to the right and then it will be positive m. And so that will be the moment at a point. So this is m and this is m. And so now let's try to place our unit load at a. So we have a unit load of one and then we'll first solve the reaction at b and at c. And so taking moments about c, I I can get by. So I have minus 1 times 25 which is our moment arm and then plus by multiplied by the moment arm which is 22. This is equal to 0 and so by will be 25 over 22 if we'll use the fraction. So this is 25 over 22 and so cy must be 1 uh, minus 1 plus 25 over 22 plus cy equals 0, we have minus 0 0.136 which in terms of fraction we have 3 over 22. Now this is minus, so that means that our assumption is wrong. So this is actually downward. And so this is minus 3 over 22. And so now, let's calculate the moment at D. Now you can consider the right side or the left side. Now it will be easier if we'll consider the right side. But I will just leave that to you as an exercise. I will just actually consider the left side. So I have minus 1 times, now again this is taking moments about D equals 0. So minus 1 times, if this is 22, then this distance must be 11 because this is at the center. So 11 meters and also this one. So we have again minus 1 times 3 plus 11 or 14 and then plus by which is 25 over 22 multiplied by 11. And then we have a counterclockwise moment so this is minus m and then this is equal to 0. And so solving m we have minus 1 times 3 plus 11 plus 25 over 22 times 11 minus m. Solving m we have negative 1.5. And so the ordinate at point A for the moment at the midspan will be minus 1.5. So this is minus 1.5. And so now we'll move our unit load to the support at B. And so let's erase this. We'll now solve for the new reactions. Now if I'll move this to the roller support, then the reaction at BY will be 1. And then the reaction at CY will be 0. And so if I'm to take moments about D, if the concentrated load is right here, then that means that the moment at the midspan will just be 0. Because taking moments about D, we have for this one, minus 1 times 11. And then for BY, we have plus 1 multiplied by the moment arm. And then minus M, that's equal to 0. And since these will cancel, then our m will also be 0. And so the ordinate of the influence line when the concentrated load is at the roller support, it will become 0. And so for a minus 1.5, we'll move to 0. Let's just make this more realistic. Let's just place 1.5 here. And so again, we'll move to 0. And so what we'll do next is we'll place the unit load at the midspan. So if I will place that at the midspan, let's just copy this. The reaction at the supports will be half of 1. 
because this span is actually simply supported and so this will become 0.5 and this is also 0.5 and so we'll now calculate the moment at this point now that will be taking moments about d we have 0.5 multiplied by 11 and then minus m this is equal to 0 and so our m will be half of 11 which is 5.5 and then positive and so we'll extend this line and then the ordinate at the mid span will be positive 5.5 now we'll also consider from the right side now for the right side we have taking moments about d this is minus 0.5 because this will cause a counterclockwise rotation about d so minus 0.5 multiplied by the moment arm which is 11 and then plus m because this is clockwise so plus m equals 0 we have m equals 5.5 and then this is still positive and so this is why for moments we don't actually consider two values because the moment considering the left side and the right side will just be equal unlike our shear now finally let's move the unit load at c now if the unit load is at c then cy will become one and then by will become zero because again the unit load is directly over the support and so that means that when i am to take moments about d if this is zero right here then the moment here will also be zero and so that's why the ordinate at this point will also be zero and so let's draw a line going to zero and then this will be our influence line now just so that I can share to you the shortcut directly, to get 5.5 or the maximum ordinate, you can just actually use A, B over L. Uh, I mean, let's just change this into A plus B so that it will be more intuitive. So if this is A and this is B, then we have 11 times 11 for the numerator. And then for the denominator, we have 11 plus 11 because our A and B are equal. In the case that it's not equal, like for example, we are considering at this point, then this will still apply for this ordinate. So 11 times 11 over 11 plus 11, we have 5.5, which is the same as this. So again, this is our shortcut. Now for the first question, we are to calculate the maximum positive span moment. Now if you are to look at our influence line diagram, this region has positive ordinates. And so that means that we'll apply our uniformly distributed load and concentrated load along this span. And so let's just remove this and then we'll now focus on the moments. And so to get the maximum positive span moment, I will place the distributed load right here because this has positive ordinates. And then for the concentrated load for moment, we have 80kn. Now we'll place this load where the ordinate is maximum so that when we'll multiply it, the moment will be maximum. So for the concentrated load, I will place it here. So this is 80kn. Now don't use 115.7 because we are not interested in the shear. We are interested in the moment. And so be careful with this. And so our maximum positive span moment will be plus m max. We have 80 times 5.5 and then we have plus uh, this is 9.35 kn per m so plus 9.35 kn per m multiplied by this area now that will be one half times the base which is a plus b now again this is 11 and this is also 11 so one half times the base which is 22 multiplied by the height which is 5.5 so this is 5.5 and then we have i mean let's just place it here so this will be 80 times 5.5 plus 9.35 times 1 half times 22 multiplied by 5.5. And so this will give us 1005.675. So 1005.675 and then this is K and M. So this is our answer. And so now we'll try to answer number two. What is the maximum support reaction? Now for number two, we actually have two possible influence lines. We can draw the influence line for B or we can draw the influence line for C. Now let's try to check which of these will produce maximum support reaction. Now let's move first to C. Now in our shortcut, we will just draw the ordinate of the support reaction and then that ordinate will be 1. And then if we'll extend this up to the roller support, this will be 0 right here. And then extending it up to A, this will have a certain value Y. Now if I will copy this and then I will draw the influence line for the reaction at B, then I have this figure. I will draw one right here. This is the ordinate and then it will be zero at C and then extending this up to A, we have this figure. Now let's say this is Y. Now it's clear to see that for the maximum support reaction, we will consider the influence line for B because the ordinate right here is actually larger than one while the ordinate here is smaller. Now if you'll use ratio and proportion, you have for this influence line, that will be one is to 22. That's equal to Y is to three for this triangle. And so solving y, we have 3 over 22, which is approximately 0 0.136. While for this one, if we use ratio and proportion, we have 1 is to 22 for this triangle. 
And then for the whole triangle, we have y is to 25. And so our y will be 1.136, which is larger than this ordinate. And so that means that for the maximum support reaction, I will choose this influence line. So we will disregard this. And then to get the maximum support reaction, we will consider this loading. Now let me just use the fraction for this. This is 25 over 22. So this is IL for maximum reaction. And so notice that all the ordinates are positive. And so what that essentially means is I will place the loads over the whole span. Now we have a uniformly distributed load of 9.35 kN per meter. Now by the way, now let me just move this down. This is our influence line. And so we will place our load over the whole span. So we have 9.35 kN per meter for the distributed load. And then since we have a concentrated load for shear, we'll apply that at the point of the highest ordinate. Now the highest ordinate is right here. So we'll apply the concentrated load. Uh, again, we'll use for shear, not for moment. So we have 115.7 kN. And so to get the maximum reaction, we have, let's say, R max. This will be 115.7 times the ordinate, which is Y, which was 25 over 22. So times 25 over 22. And then plus the distributed load, which is 9.35. Now let me just move this one. And then we'll multiply this by the area of the triangle, which is 1 half times the base, which is 25 meters. And then multiplied by the height, which is 25 over 22. So 25 over 22. And then we can now solve the maximum reaction. This will be 115.7 times 25 over 22 plus 9.35 times 1 half times 25 squared divided by 22. We have 264.29. So R max equals 264.29. 0.29 kn and so this is our answer now let me just move these and then we'll now solve number three which is the maximum negative moment now there's actually a concept here if we have an overhanging beam the maximum negative moment will occur if all of our loads are at the overhang because as you can see here this part of the overhang induces negative moment and so what this essentially means is the maximum negative moment will occur at the roller support and so what we're going to do is we'll make the influence line for the moment at the roller support. So IL for moment at B because this is our roller support. Now for the purpose of speeding things up, let me just use my application. Now this is our beam. We have a 25 meter span and then if we'll place a unit load at the end of the overhang, then the moment at the roller support will be equal to negative 3, this value. So that means that this will be the ordinate at the overhang because this is the moment at the roller support when the unit load is at the end of the overhang. So here we have negative 3. So let's draw a line. This is actually minus 3. So minus 3. And then next, we'll move our unit load at the roller support. Now if I will move that at the roller support, which is at 3 meters, the moment at the roller support will become 0. And so that means that the ordinate here will be 0. So let's connect a line. We have this one. And then next, we will now move our unit load to the hinge support. So let's place it here. And then notice that the moment at the roller support will still be zero. And so our influence line will actually look like this. We'll just draw a connecting line and then this will be zero. So this might be new to you. Now if we'll try to check, if we'll place the unit load anywhere along the span, uh, this simply supported span, the moment at the roller support will actually always be zero. As you can see right here, this is always zero. So this is our influence line. And then notice that here, we can't apply our shortcut, which is AB over A plus B. Because then, if this is our A and this is our B, we actually have A, which is 3, times B, which is 22, over A, which is 3, and then plus 22. We can't get this ordinate. If I will type that, we have 3 times 22 over 3 plus 22, we have 2.64, which is wrong because we need an ordinate of 3. Now sir, how are we going to get this? What's another shortcut? Now the shortcut here is, uh, we actually have this concept. The rotation relative to the other beam must be equivalent to a unit rotation or a rotation of 1. Now here, uh, let's say we want to solve 5.5 using that concept. And then let's say this is the slope of A, and then this is the slope of B. Now for very small angles, the slope of A and the slope of B will just be rise over run. So slope equals rise over run. And then what we are trying to look for is the slope relative to the other beam. Now sir, what do you mean by beam? We can actually consider this as our beam and also this one. 
And so if I will extend this, and then I will draw a horizontal line, then this will be the slope of A, because this is with respect to the horizontal. So slope of A, and then this is the slope of B. And so this total rotation will be the slope of A plus the slope of B. And then this total rotation must be equivalent to a unit rotation. So this must be equal to 1. This is from the concept of virtual work. Now since the slope is just rise over run, we can label this height as y. So if this is y, then we can define the slope of A as y over 11 or rise over run. So using this formula, we have the slope of A will be y over 11 and then the slope of B will also be y over 11 because this is the rise and this is run. So plus y over 11, that will be equal to 1. So we have x over 11. And then we'll just multiply this by 2 because they are just the same. So times 2 and then that's equal to 1. So solving y we have 5.5. And so this is another shortcut. But you can actually just memorize this shortcut because this is more flexible. So y equals 5.5. And so here the rotation relative to the other beam since this is only horizontal. If we'll extend this line then we'll have this. And so this will be the rotation relative to the other beam. Now this is our first beam and this is our second beam. Now again, we can consider a line as another beam if there is a change in slope. Now here, since there is a change in slope at A and B, then we can consider this as two beams. And that will be the same here. This is one beam and this is another beam. And then this is the rotation relative to the other beam. Now, by the way, you can identify the rotation by extending a line and then getting the angle between the two. Now let me just remove this and then for the purpose of similarity, we'll just extend the first beam. So if I'll extend this line, we have this and then this will be our rotation. Now this is also the rotation of A. And so since we know that this rotation must be a unit rotation, then we can use rise over run. So we have the slope of A must be equal to 1. Now what is the slope of A? Now let's say we don't know this value this negative 3. So let me just move that one. We have rise over run which is let's say this is y. So we have y is to the horizontal distance which is 3 this one. So y over 3 is equal to a unit rotation of 1. And so solving y we have 3. And then since we are talking about negative moment then the sign of this will be negative. This is how you can get negative 3. So again this is our shortcut but if you don't want to use the shortcut just remember this concept. The maximum negative moment occurs when all the loads are at the overhang. This is what you have to remember. Now here we have a uniformly distributed load of 9.35 and a concentrated load for moment which is 80. And so what this means is I will place the uniformly distributed load at the overhang because this causes a negative moment. So this will be 9.35 and then we have a concentrated load of 80. So this is 80. Again, this is the concentrated load for moment. So we have the maximum negative moment is equal to 80 times negative 3 and then minus 9.35. Uh, again, this is minus because these are below the zero line and then multiplied by the area which is one half times the base which is 3 and then times the height which is also 3. And so this will be 80 times negative 3 minus 9.35 times 1 half times base times height, we have minus 282.075. So minus 282.075 and then this is K and M. This is now our answer. Now if you will try to make sense of this, we can place the concentrated load here which is 116 and then we can place our distributed load which is 9.35 for both. So this is minus 9.35 which is somewhere here uh, at the middle and then this is also 9.35. Uh, by the way this is 80. Let me just remove this and then this is 80. And so if the loads are at the overhang then the moment at the roller support will be minus 282 which is this value. And so for number 3 you don't actually need to draw the influence line and then what you can do is you can just take moments about B. So taking moments about B we have minus 80 times 3 and then minus 9.35 times 3 for the resultant. Now again this is our resultant 9.35 times 3 and then our moment arm will be half of 3 which is 1.5. So times 1.5, we can get the moment at B automatically, which is the maximum negative moment. So minus 80 times 3, and then minus 9.35 times 3 times 1.5, that will give us the same value. So this is actually the better way, if you know the concept.